with our topic this evening, released. If you're unsure about released, I mean, for, for this message, I sort of have like a double, triple meaning with the word release. And I think the common word for released is sort of like in terms of ministry and receiving prayer. Is, uh, it's, it can be described as a burden from the past that's being released out of us and, and that's, that's escaping out of our hearts, causing us um, fear or feeling terrible where we can come into a place of feeling joy and peace. And so this, th- this topic is, uh, is uh, well, really just kind of moving to the next step after that, you know, sort of answers the question, well, now what? Which is quite clear with the uh, candle word that was given this evening. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's get started, today. Eh? So releasing's purpose, you see, that God's release for us on the inside is intended to deepen our relationship with Him and His Son, to strengthen the church, and to release us into action towards the mission of Christ. That's the purpose of being released. When we come to a place where we can be vulnerable and be authentic, in that place where God where we can allow God to release something out of our lives. Oh, that's God's way of wanting to deepen his relationship with us. And at the same time, whenever our brothers and sisters gather around us and pray for us, and then all of a sudden they start speaking into our life and they start receiving revelations that they had no idea about and it makes total relevance to, to what we're experiencing at that moment. It just strengthens the people because... They're, it's quite clear that God is speaking through them. We're hearing from God. And then it releases us into action towards the mission of Christ. Because that's that overflow. So that's just releasing its purpose. Because what I like to do is I like to get what we feel, you know, in that releasing moment, in that releasing experience, and to put it into words to help us understand. So was that helpful? Awesome. Awesome. So one of the things I really wanted to touch on to is that we've experienced the being, being deepened into the relationship with God and with Jesus, and we've experienced the strengthening of the church and all of us getting excited and celebrating for what God is doing and what he's done. And I really wanted to touch and focus this message on is being released into an action towards the mission of Christ. Because this verse came to my mind when I knew that the Holy Spirit retreat was coming up. You see, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. That's the reality of being released from God. Because the end result isn't just to feel good and to feel better. The end result is to go and make disciples. And to put it into a perspective of what Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria, what that looks like, it sort of looks like Jerusalem can symbolize Porirua. Judea can symbolize Wellington. Samaria can symbolize Canterbury. And the ends of the earth can symbolize For those of you who don't know, Gary's from the South Island. Yeah, he's from overseas. Yeah. <laughs> and he says he's a missionary to the north, but I think we need some Wellingtonian missionaries to go to the south. Amen? Amen? And to the ends of the earth is sort of like West New Zealand, a.k.a. Australia. You see, that's the reality of, the, of being released in action towards the mission of Christ, you see. That's the reality. That is what God is calling each and every single one of us to do. See, as followers of Jesus, we are called to be released into action. And I was thinking this, this evening... Everybody in here, whether you're a follower of Jesus or you're not, it's quite clear that God is calling all of us. Calling all of us to respond. That's why we're leaving an opportunity for you at the end of the message. 
You see, when we are called, we are equipped. When we are equipped, we have the tools. And when we have the tools, it's up to our willingness to use them. That's the reality of being released into action. That is the reality right there. When we are called, we are equipped. And when we have the tools, it is up to our willingness to use them. And I love this passage in Isaiah where it says, Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And then Isaiah says, Here I am. Send me. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Send me, Lord. Send me. Here I am. I will give you what I have. It may not be much. It may be the size of a mustard seed, but here I am. Amen. Hallelujah. He is calling each of us to action. Regardless of where we've been, regardless of who we are, regardless of what background we've come from, he's calling you. He's calling you. And here's my question. If you heard the, if you heard the Lord at your home or at work, Wherever you're at, whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Who will talk to that person I love? Who's going to talk to that customer? Who's going to talk to that classmate of yours? What will your response be? Hallelujah. What will your response be? What will you say? I'll leave that to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, being released into action is intimidating and exciting all at once, all at the same time. And I have a funny story I wanted to share with you that happened to me this week. And at the end of it, there's two reasons why I'm sharing it. But what happened was, uh, um, as you can see, I got a haircut, you know. <laughs> so um, I was uh, picking up Bella from Kindy. And um, so fresh haircut and picking up Bella, and I gave her a hug, and one of her close friends, um, she, she, she knows me, and so she, she looks up at me, and she goes, what happened to you? What do you mean? Your hair. It's st straight. And, and, so I'm, I'm, and so I decided to play along with this. I was like, what happened to it? What happened? And she goes, you ruined it. <laughs> oh, man. I'm glad somebody liked it. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. I thought, oh, man. You know, <laughs> that was just so funny. And so I, I, I was, uh, you know, really thinking upon that. And I was like, wow, Lord, that is really cute. And that is really funny. You know, and so I had this idea, you know, wanting to share her, one of her parents, that, that story, because I know one of her parents. And, and all of a sudden, what I've been doing recently is that what I've been trying to do is that wherever I go, I come to a place before God and I say, Lord, is there anything you want to say to me right now? And he'll say, I love you. I care for you. and Don't be afraid. And go and help Laura. Go and clean the dishes. Go buy some nappies. You know, the whole nine yards. Then... I take it a step further, right? I increase my intentions about being more outward. So I say, Lord, is there anything you want to say to somebody through me right now? Big words, but I've been wanting to do it because my motivation is that I don't want people to be robbed for something that I have inside of me that's designed to overflow to them. And that story came up. <laughs> and so I started praying. Then I got a picture for her parent. Now I'm really freaking out. <laughs> I'm really freaking out. So I'm like, okay, okay, all right, yep. Oh, I don't want to do this. Okay, yep, yep, yep. So I go. So I go into kindy, right? I got the, I'm called, 
I got the tools. I'm willing. Here I am. I'm going. So I'm going into kindy. I'm ready to deliver the word. And she's on the other side, and I'm over here, and I'm like trying to overanalyze things. And be like, okay, well, when's the perfect opportunity to, to, to do this? And, and, you know, I have it all lined up in my head. I want to share the story, and I want to use it as a platform to lead into the picture. It's going to be great, God. It's going to be great. Watch this. So she comes, she signs out, and she has her other uh, son with her, and, and, you know, she's juggling, juggling, juggling all the, all the kids, and it's real loud and real loud, and I'm trying to, like, capture that moment and to get her to interact with me, and she's just focusing it, focused, focused, like, just not even, like, acknowledging me, hey, eh? and I'm like, Lord, this is really difficult, hey, eh? it's really difficult. So then, by the end of it, um, we walk outside, and I mustered up the courage to say my platform, to say the story. So I say the story, and as I'm saying it, you know how you're like talking to people, and they're like kind of walking away at the same time? <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, that was happening to me. So I'm sharing the story. She's walking away, going to her car, and then all of a sudden she says, oh, well, you have a great weekend, Rob. And at this moment, I'm thinking, I have a choice. I can either say, you have a good weekend too, or I go for it, take the risk, and tell her that God has, has a picture for her. So what does Robert do? Robert says, have a good weekend. <laughs> oh, 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 man. Oh, man. Look. Man, you know, you know, sometimes you get stuck, right? You get stuck. And you know what? I said this in the beginning, and I wanted to share this story for two reasons. One, I wanted to be able to relate to anybody who's been in a similar position. And to let them know that it's okay, that that's part of learning and it's part of the journey, okay? Number two is that I'm saying it publicly. That way I may be held accountable to give that picture to her this week. Because I don't want her to get robbed for something that I cowered in. I want her to realize that God has something for her. I want her to realize that God loves her, God cares for her, and God sees what she's going through. And so I'm encouraged, and that's why I wanted to share the story. So guys, it's part of the journey. So that's why I wish I knew this. Well, I wish I was reminded of this. You know, where, wherever you are, whenever you are arrested and brought to trial, do not worry beforehand about what to say. Just say whatever is given you at the time. For it is not you speaking, but the Holy Spirit. One of the key aspects is that why did the, why did the people get arrested and, and put the trial in the first place? That's because they activated, the, they activated God's call in their life. That's why they're being brought to trial. So when we are activated into doing what God wants us to do, and responding to faith and talking to someone and releasing the overflow in our life, and we get worried on what to say, Jesus says, don't worry, but speak what is given to you at that time, for it will be the Holy Spirit speaking to you. So you can take confidence in that when you activate your faith and you respond to what God is asking you to do. Amen? You're released into overflow because Jesus sends out his disciples and he says, as you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. In other words, his presence falling, the gifts, the words, the prophecies, the kingdom of heaven is among us. He says, heal the sick. Raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons, for freely you have received, so freely give. That is the overflow of being released right there. Overflow, freely we have received, so freely give. And I want to do a little flip-flop right here, since God has freely, or since since we have freely received, that means God has freely given that, right? At the expense of Jesus. And if God has given this special gift for free, why wouldn't you want to accept it? Why wouldn't, 
why, why wouldn't you want to grab hold of it? Because if we intend the best for our kids, God has the exact same intentions for us. So I encourage you, come. Come and receive. Because freely we've received. So Jesus says, freely we shall give. So I'm wrapping up quite quickly. May you go with courage. May you go with confidence that the Lord, your God, is with you. I want you to know that. So right now, um, yeah, it's quite clear that God has spoken and he wants to leave an opportunity for us. So we're going to head into that space.